Hello, today something a little different. Hopefully you won't get too triggered down in the comments. I am going to be looking at USB power delivery triggers and decoys. These devices are pretty useful for testing any kind of USB devices and are a requirement these days if you want to do that kind of work. You need something to be able to emulate the USB protocol chip and simulate a connected device like a laptop. And these little devices are just the ticket to do this. So in this video, as usual, I will get technical and into depth on these things. The fact is they all work, but the question is to what level do they work? So in this video, I will be testing these to find out how much resistance they have. As we all know, it's a fact of life that things have resistance and these are no different, but how much? The PCB designs pretty much determine this. There are so many of these available. So this video is just covering some of the ones I had around already as a first pass. These devices will also be checked to see how much power consumption they have in five volt mode and in other PD modes, if different. There is an affiliate link, which earns me a couple percent, but costs you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. I've been turning off mid-roll ads because YouTube has been pushing ads after five seconds of video start, so these affiliate links and Patreon are more important than ever. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. So what is a USB trigger or decoy? This is a device that generally has a special chip that enables the circuit to talk to a USB-C port. There is data that is communicated over the USB cable that your device uses to ask for power. If this communication doesn't happen, no power is delivered. You can try this out with a non-PD device. It won't let the USB port turn on. So these triggers enable the charger or power supply. They can communicate to ask for more voltage or higher power modes of operation. The operation is pretty simple, but there are a few pins required for communication. The CC1 and CC2 pins are where most of the data is transferred. The D plus and D minus lines are also connected for legacy support, but these don't send data as that would interfere with the USB data transfer. In general, it is an off the shelf protocol chip that is used. These often have a few digital pins to them that will allow a microcontroller to pick a mode and adjust the requirements per device needs. In many cases now, you get dip switches to force these modes or a microcontroller and a push button. These are useful for a lot of purposes. I use them for things like older laptops, game consoles, older computer power supplies, all my studio lighting, loudspeakers, really anything that needs a voltage range within the range of USB. And with the current range of USB products out there now, this covers a huge range of small electronics. Who is going to bother with these things? Well, me, obviously. I probably didn't need to say that. There are essentially tools for anyone who wants to test any USB-C devices. Anyone who wants to experiment with USB-C power delivery and its various modes, these are great tools. But with more recent versions, the cost is now low enough that replacing some other power supplies with these is becoming more reasonable. Time to go through some PD triggers. I'm gonna go through these fairly quickly since there are a lot. I will hit the main points as we go along. Pause as needed to read more or check out Patreon if you want a copy of the data. First up is the one I use almost constantly. This has a ton of modes of operation it will ask for. This is great because it allows you to find all the modes available in a USB power adapter or power bank. This adapter tests quite well. The power consumption is fairly low on its own and its resistance is pretty low. So it's a low loss option. The main issue with this one is the price. We'll check that out later. Also, they don't make it anymore. I wish I bought more of them. It's the last device I have that works and asks for a PPS mode. This device has an LED that displays in different colors to indicate the modes of operation. This next device was purchased because it's the only one I was able to find that supports higher voltage USB PD modes, specifically the extended power range or EPR modes. This device goes all the way up to 48 volts. It does use a little more power while doing so, but since the power delivered in this mode is up to 240 watts, it's a small percentage of the power. The resistance is again, fairly good. This will be a theme. For the most part, USB decoys I found are good. This next device is a unique device in that it has a push and hold to remember the previous state, so you can store the mode, which is nice. This could be useful for installation in an electronic project. 
The PCB also has mounting holes, so it's more of a DIY-friendly board. The resistance and power consumption are excellent. It does support one EPR mode, so 28 volts. So for the most part, it can cover the broad range of USB power adapters on the market. This also has LEDs to indicate the mode. This is an interesting device. It is made to have a cable soldered onto the board, so you can attach it to whatever cable you have for your device. Again, this is another really great DIY solution. This also has very low power consumption and good resistance values. The device has another trick up its sleeve. Since you'll be needing the soldering iron anyway to attach the wires, you can use that iron and some tweezers to change the resistor value to make the device operate in different modes. Neat. This next one is the worst of the bunch, by a lot. This device was supposed to ask for USB PD 5 volt, but the resistors appear not to work. And it doesn't ask for anything, so no power consumption, but no chip, as expected. The resistance was also a bit higher on this one, so not a great choice. It's really for legacy devices, or making a USB-A cable. I was hoping this would just do 5 volts, but I think it's got some issue with the wiring. Okay, a different style. This one has a set of three switches that allow you to choose the power delivery mode. The good thing here is that it can't forget the mode. The switches force the mode of operation and you can easily change it without a resistor or needing a microcontroller or a soldering iron. The issue with this one is it's a little power hungry. The little chip is a CK224K. These have a hidden 11th pin under the chip too. I wonder if the power consumption can be improved if the LED is removed. One thing about this chip is its massive availability and low cost. This one claims to be a USB PD 3.1 device, but it doesn't do the 28 volt mode. It just turns off if you ask for this mode, so it clearly isn't that. The device does use the dip switch setting, so it will remember, but with less modes of operation. I'd pick something else. This one is a more basic PD device. It looks like the same tech as one of the others with the dip switches. Very similar performance too. If it's cheap enough, maybe? These are absolutely tiny. Jacob's parts were some of the earlier tiny chips I could find for PD triggers, and these work well. They are fixed and don't provide instructions to change the mode of operation. You can probably look up the datasheet though and figure it out. The resistance is very low and the power consumption is also very low. This is a great DIY option for installation in devices. Just make sure you buy the one that you need. Finally is the Power Z trigger board from a little ways back. These were only ever available in limited quantities. They were certainly for the hacker and tinkerer, requiring a bit more work to be able to use it as a PD trigger. The device did have a very unique and welcome feature that none of these other devices have, and that is it can change the programmable power supply voltage it asks for. Of course, it's not available anymore. It has a minor issue of destroying itself in certain conditions. Like I said, a little more advanced. It did have good LED indication though. I want another one of these, ha. Okay, time to compare these triggers. They mostly share a lot of features. There are a few odds and ends here and there that do much less or do a little bit more. Only one has the 48 volt mode as an option for a request. There are slowly more chips becoming available that can do these higher modes of operation, so we'll see if more options come onto the market for this. If the Power Z didn't blow up, I'd still be using that. It's half my fault. I used it out of spec, but it technically has the chip that'll ask for that voltage, but that will also blow it up. In terms of value, the Jacob parts and the Markalos triggers are the best priced performance you can get. The older ones are certainly more expensive. In terms of modes of operation though, with the PPS capabilities, the older ones had more modes of operation than anything else. The efficiency is another thing to look at. Essentially, all of these do a good job at getting the power where it belongs. The one that wasn't a PD device is the exception here. When looking at the power consumption for these, this is the power that they use just being plugged in. These spread out quite a bit. The power consumed by the tiny PCB with the generic brand device, yeah, they couldn't even bother branding it, is surprisingly good. So for lower power devices, this is a good choice to keep efficiency high. When looking at the resistance, the lower the value, the better. This is the total resistance in milliohms for each of these triggers. Really, only one of them is not great, the others all did quite good here. The Jacob Parts, again, stands out as a good option for DIY needs. The YZX Studio has an actual branded USB-C port, so you can look up its datasheet, and it's well within spec. And this one has been operated probably thousands of times at this point. 
How long will some of these others hold up is an unknown. The maximum power dissipated is the amount of heat these boards will have to dissipate under maximum load. The power these can deliver is different board to board, but this is the worst case you will have to deal with. On some of these boards, getting rid of one watt of heat in a tiny PCB can be a problem. So something to keep in mind. The YZX gets a little warm under full load operation, but not bad. The Jacob Parts, again, is a standout here for having both low resistance and low power consumption. That's a lot of PD triggers and a lot of data. I think the good thing is that most of them did quite good. Only one of them didn't work with PD, so the resistors are not connected to the CC lines. Then one of them didn't have one of the modes it claimed to have. Otherwise, all of these devices worked exactly as advertised and did everything they were expected to do. The majority of the triggers asked for the mode and delivered current, keeping the efficiency high, therefore transferring the most power to the product being powered as opposed to consuming it. This is generally a great result. I know there are a ton of these things out there and the price ranges get real cheap too. I start to wonder about fake chips or missing features as these get cheaper. You can find these all over eBay, AliExpress, and Amazon. But I think based on these results, you can have some confidence that the one you get is going to work and do the proper job. Remember, you can harm devices if the voltages don't match. So if you use one of these, do your homework. That's about it. A bunch of USB PD triggers. I can say that I am now thoroughly triggered. Time to go take a nap. Let me know if one of these meets a requirement for you or if you have an upcoming project using one of these. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.